a magnitude 3.9 earthquake struck the Los Angeles area early Sunday morning, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Drivers trapped on highway as part of a key interstate in upstate New York. Wildfires are burning out of control in San Diego County. This is called... Hi, I'm Jamie Franks. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on social media, I posted a few still photos of a survival pack that I made, and I called it my Get Home Pack. Uh, I've received several messages via social media asking me to detail exactly what's in the pack. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do for you right now. Uh, I apologize if this video runs a little long, but uh, there, there's quite a bit of thought and everything that went into the pack, and I want you to be able to understand. Um, first off, uh, I don't really consider myself... Uh, paranoid or you know I'm not I'm not a zombie guy uh, or an apocalypse guy I'm not a prepper by any means uh, to be perfectly honest I saw the movie San Andreas and it got me thinking that I spend a lot of my time in San Diego and Los Angeles and in between and what would I do if uh, you know some horrible uh, situation happened and I was in my vehicle or near my vehicle and just had you know the clothes on my back. I, I I just felt it was really irresponsible for me to be that unprepared, uh, considering that that I'm the kind of person that gives that thing thought. So um, this isn't uh, this isn't meant to be an, an all-out survival kit. Um, I do have a kit here at my home that I call an inch pack. I N C H. I'm never coming home. Uh, but this pack is not that. This pack is, I call it a get home pack because before I can get home to use my inch pack, which is really big and heavy and bulky with lots of stuff in it, uh, I need to first get home or, or get to a safe place and where I can start making my way home. Uh, so these are the things I put in the survival kit uh, just to allow me to get home. It's not meant for indefinite survival. It's meant for just being uh, on the move, uh, working towards getting my way to safety for you know maybe up to three days. Um, and, and there are a few allowances made for if I had some people with me. So we're going to go into it right now. Um, as we go into this, uh, you know, I'll, I'll uh, talk about some details about myself because that's, you know, that's kind of what went into the pack here. So as you can see, I, I drive a Toyota 4Runner, so it's an SUV. So I have my uh, pack strapped down on the back. I have it strapped down just because I don't want to hear it rattling around when I'm driving. And so it won't be ejected from the vehicle in case of a, a car crash. Uh, also, in the line of work that I do, I'm a Navy Rescue Swimmer instructor, so I do a lot of uh, work in the ocean and the bay. And uh, so I have always, for many years, carried just a gallon jug of water in my truck with me for the main reason of just rinsing myself off when I get out of the ocean or out of the bay. So that also factors into the survival pack. So we're going to assume that uh, there's been some kind of thing, and I'm going to go through the, there's been some sort of emergency, and I'm going to go through the pack for you. Now, um, also, due to the nature of my work, I am a National Registry Emergency Medical Technician. I'm an NREMTB. Um, so you'll see that my pack is kind of uh, medical gear intensive, and that's because, uh, much to the chagrin of all the zombie apocalypse morons out there, uh, the thing that you're most likely to use most of the time is going to be your med gear, or at least for me, I think, because you're either going to be in a car accident, which is way more likely than an apocalyptic event, or you're going to come across an accident on the road or, you know, with all the shooting and stuff that I do, somebody's actually going to get shot on the range or something like that. Um, so I felt that the, the thing that's most likely to be used is my med gear. So you're going to see a lot of that. So assuming now I have to access my pack, boom, I open the back door or reach to the back window and it's right here. I'm gonna undo the strap and get the pack out. Now you'll notice the first thing that came flopping out was this big red tag that I made for myself. And uh, this is just in case I'm incapacitated or dead or whatever, and somebody else needs to use this survival gear, I made a little reminder card to remind people that this is other stuff that I have in the car with me that I just carry with me on a daily basis that's not necessarily in the pack. So don't forget to go through your vehicle and get all this, you know, scrounge all the stuff that you could use, things like in my EDC backpack that I carry with me every day, I have a portable solar panel in case I'm out at the beach or something and want to charge my cell phone or whatever, but that may be a good survival item to have. Uh, I have a spot satellite messenger, which I've had for many years, is in a fantastic piece of equipment. Uh, fantastic piece of equipment. I've used it many times. It's, to me, that's worth its weight in gold, so that's on here, my spot messenger. Uh, my car keys have little tools on them, so maybe you know grab the car keys. Um, uh, Road Atlas. Uh, if I have to strike out on foot 
it's stupid to try to put a bunch of maps in here. Your GPS may not work, or even if it does work, it's going to run out of batteries at some point. So uh, I have, I always keep an updated road atlas in my truck. So if I'm, say if I'm in between San Diego and Las Vegas, or in between San Diego and Phoenix somewhere in the desert, and don't really know where I am or don't really know what direction I should go, I can pull out my knife and cut out the, uh, the applicable pages of the road atlas and stuff those in here and uh, have a map without me having to carry uh, an entire catalog of maps. Um, so think, you know, gloves, phone charger, the little uh, sun visor shades that you put in your windshield on a hot day, those can be used for signaling, those can be used for cover, they don't weigh anything. Uh, so it's just things like that, um, that, you, that you, things that you may have in your vehicle that you may not want to forget. All right, so I've accessed my pack now. Um, the first thing that you may notice is it's uh, cinched up with uh, bungee cords. Um, I keep the uh, bungee cords on here uh, because I want bungee cords to be a part of the pack because bungee cords are something easy where you can affix things to the pack and things like that. And, uh, but it keeps the pack tight and cinched down so things aren't flopping around and falling out. So first thing I'm going to do now is take off those bungee cords. Again, much to the chagrin of the zombie idiots, the, the thing that you're most likely to use is going to be your med kit. So I've set up this bag where that's the most easiest thing to, uh, to access. So um, one of the things that I have from being in the military for 18 years is I have a few of these uh, IFACs or individual first aid kits, or we call them the blowout kit. Um, so you can see here, you open this, I've got two tourniquets, I have uh, quick clot, combat gauze, uh, rubber gloves here, rubber gloves here duct tape, which is really good to sticking when you're all bloody or wet, more rubber gloves, you can never have too many, a, uh, a needle, a tension pneumothorax relief needle, um, and H bandages, stuff like that. So this is uh, basically a, a trauma kit for severe trauma. Um, outside of that, I have two cat tourniquets, again from uh, the, the combat medicine stuff that I know, uh, tourniquets are in, an invaluable piece of equipment that can save a life. Uh, on the outside here, I also have just a uh, cotton bandana uh, that can be used for a million things. So the first pouch, I have a SAM splint. And again, because I'm an EMT, I, I uh, have a little bit more maybe med kit on here that I need. But it's something like this where, you know, some survivalist person may say, well, there's a million ways you can make a tourniquet. And like, yeah, but I don't want to go Boy Scout and run off into the woods and try to cut down a tree limb to use as a, turn a uh, splint. When I have, I can put a Sam splint here. It weighs nothing, and in a survival situation, you could probably use this for, you know, many, many other things. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Sam splint, look it up. A very usable piece of equipment, right here on top. So I have that in there. Uh, the next is uh, we call these uh, Israeli bandages, um, and I have two in here. I have a six inch and a four inch somewhere. Uh, this is the six inch one. More first aid items. So in here I have little um, ice packs, the ones that you break them and they turn cold. And then just an assortment of other uh, sterile pads and gauze and bandages and tape. Uh, in here I have little bags of uh, meds like ibuprofen, aspirin, things like that. Moving on, um, I've always been a fan of the AMK Adventure Medical Kits, uh, first aid kits. So I have one of those in here that I beefed up with a couple of extra little things, but I'll open this up just to show you. Uh, this is the Adventure Medical Kits uh, 2.0 first aid kit for one to four people. Um, it looks like that when you open it up. As you can see, I put more rubber gloves in here and it has, uh, it has a miniature, like just a really super basic survival kit, like a compass and a whistle. Um, but it's just a basic first aid kit, you know, with a few things that I added. So moving on, uh, here's the other Israeli bandage that's in here. So that's all the med kit, um, I think. So the main thing I wanted this kit to do is, uh, you know, in any survival situation, your survival priorities or shelter, water, fire, food, in that order. So I definitely wanted to be able to cover those bases, but the uh, the guidance I use for this pack is what's known as the 10 C's of survival. So 
Uh, the 10 C's of survival, the, the med kit stuff here covers one of the C's and that's care. Uh, the other nine are cutting, combustion, cordage, cover, container, candle, uh, compass, and communications. So you'll see as we go through this, I'll refer to which C this covers, but the med kit would be the C for care. So giving care of first aid. Uh, the next thing is cordage. Uh, this is a spool tool. This is something I already had. Uh, the spool tool is really neat. Uh, I've got 100 feet of 550 cord on here, and if you're familiar with 550 cord, you know that you can cut it open. And inside the 550 cord is uh, like several other smaller threads that are also high tensile strength. So you can use the, the 550 cord uh, just as it is. You can gut the 550 cord, use the, uh, the outer shell, and you can use all the inner threads. But the spool tool has a little cutter on here for cutting the cord, and you can put a lighter on there with uh, to melt the end of the cord and keep it from uh, fraying but also this plays into the C for combustion I have a cigarette lighter right here that's super easy combustion if I need it uh, that's another thing to keep in mind for any survival kit is every single item in the survival kit every single item in the survival kit should have more than one use if you have a survival kit and you have a piece of gear in your survival kit that only has one singular use get rid of it get rid of it and replace it you know, a, a good example of that that I've always that I've already talked about is the Sam splint. Uh, yeah, it's a moldable splint for use in, uh, you know, giving first aid. But I bet you I could use that Sam splint for a hundred other things. Anyway, so here's some cordage with my uh, spool tool. Um, in here, uh, on the front of my backpack, I do have some uh, Velcro panels. Um, so I have a survival strobe in here. Uh, survival strobe. This is a military issue. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I have in this kit is uh, issued to me by the military. Um, I have it dummy corded so I can stick it onto the backpack so I can make myself a walking signal. As I'm walking through, I can have the strobe on. It does have the IR cover on it in case I only want good guys with night vision to see me for some reason. Uh, and it does have the uh, blue filter also to make the strobe directional and uh, kind of lower intensity. But anyway, Standard issue uh, military strobe, so I have that in here on quick uh, access because I may need to signal someone in a hurry, again, using the example of a, a car crash on the freeway. Um, I have several chem lights in here. Uh, just uh, I have blue, red, and green. Uh, one of the things I learned in survival class in the military is that you can break a, a, a chem light, attach it to a string, and spin it around, and that can be seen for several miles. And then in here I do have a, a more intensive signaling kit. Uh, that has uh, does have another uh, high intensity uh, chem light um, has just a regular pop flare and then I actually have two aerial flares that will actually shoot up uh, and, and actually launch a flare into the air so these are all things that uh, I feel like I may need to access you know in, in just a regular type emergency where I'm giving aid to a person on the side of the road or myself and trying to signal for help you know possibly beside the highway all right, so on the outside of the pack, just to, to give you an overview, I've got uh, my earplugs. Again, I've got my blowout kit. On the bottom here, I've uh, I, I folded up my raincoat real nice and, and neat and attached my raincoat on here with another piece of bungee cord. Uh, again, if I didn't say it already, the bungee cords are great because you can uh, use that to attach stuff to your pack or for some reason you need to camouflage yourself or hide your pack. You can stick vegetation under the bungee cords, do all that kind of stuff. On the outside of the pack, moving up, I have a uh, six inch red chem light and a four inch green chem light. And I have a flashlight with uh, a red filter on it. This is a Surefire flashlight. Uh, normally I would uh, advise anybody to uh, get a flashlight that doesn't require like a specialized battery. Uh, these require the lithium CR123 batteries. So you may want to get a flashlight with a, a more readily available uh, battery, meaning like a AA or a AAA battery. Um, but I have two Surefire lights. I carry one in my pocket all the time, this little one, and this one that's on the pack. So I have extra CR123 batteries in here. But anyway, again, this is candle. And uh, your candle can also be used as your comms for signaling. So again, dual use for everything. All right, and here, one of the C's of survival was compass. All right, you already saw that I had a small compass in there uh, that just came in there, so I left it in there. And then I have my nice uh, Sunto compass. And then this one can also be used as signaling. So um, it's being used for navigation. It's dual use. You can use it for signaling and for navigation. And it covers one of our C's of survival. And I have it dummy corded because I don't want to lose it. Uh, 
going on in here. Um, whistle. I also have it dummy corded and stuck in there. This is also can be used for signaling, so it can be used for comms and can also be used as a, uh, uh, well, it can be used as it's a, it's a signal and it's as comms. Um, uh, signal mirror. Uh, this is your standard issue again, military uh, signal mirror. Uh, so you can look through it and uh, signal for rescue. And I also have this dummy corded. So now that's everything I have on outside of the pack. Uh, I have on the just on here the uh, infrared uh, American flag, and then if I'm not worried about being uh, camouflaged, I have the full color American flag, also reflective and IR. Because uh, usually in an emergency you want to be seen, but if it's some kind of emergency where you don't necessarily want to be seen, you know you need to prepare for that. So now that's everything that's on the outside of the pack or accessible from the outside of the pack. So moving on into the inside of the pack, again, the way I set this up is things that I'm most likely to use just in an everyday, uh, you know, emergency situation. Now moving into the interior of the pack, these are things that I'm, I'm starting to get into that survival mode where I'm going to be concerned about shelter, water, fire, and food. So the way I have this pack set up, as I open the pack and access the pack, the first thing I'm going to get to are things that I, I'm going to need that I'm going to move into my pockets and move onto my person and actually make some room into the pack. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, that's one thing that a lot of people forget to put in their survival kits is extra space. Uh, everybody, a lot, I've seen so many survival kits where every single square inch of the pack is filled and you got to play Tetris to get everything back in there. But then if you were in a situation where you had all your stuff out, and you need to get everything in a hurry and just jam it back in the pack and move, uh, if all your available space is taken, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to leave things behind or try to juggle things. And also, if you come along, uh, you know, come across things along the way, there's going to be no room to carry them. So anyway, moving into the uh, interior of the pack now, uh, the first thing I'm going to do, if I was moving out on foot, I'm going to take this knife off and I'm going to move this knife onto my belt. Uh, this is the... Uh, it's actually the Les Stroud knife made by Camelus. Uh, I got this as a gift a while back, but it's, it really is a great knife uh, if you're a fan of Recoil Magazine. Uh, Recoil actually rated this knife very highly, but uh, this is a great survival knife with many, many features. Uh, you can look into this knife yourself if you want to know more. Again, this is the Les Stroud knife, but uh, just quickly, it has like a, a real good hammer on the back of the uh, hilt of the knife. The knife blade itself is super strong, has a signal mirror, has a uh, whistle. Now, that's not the whistle, that's the fire starter, the fire steel. The whistle's on this side. Not a very good one, but at least it's there. And it has a little LED flashlight. Uh, it has a little spool for cordage and a cutter for cordage and a sharpener for the knife. I mean, this is a really good survival knife. It's brightly colored. But again, if I was moving into survival mode, I would take this off the pack, moving on to my belt. So now I'm going to open the pack. All right. Open in the main compartment of the pack. So the first thing that's going to happen is this is going to come out. Uh, one reoccurring theme you're going to see in my survival kit is I have tons of rubber bands and plastic bags. Rubber bands and plastic bags have infinite uses in a survival situation. But here, I have a write in the rain notepad, a pencil, a ballpoint pen, and a sharpie. Uh, it's always useful to be able to write things down in a survival situation. Maybe you have to uh, do a little reconnaissance. Maybe, you know, write down things you're observing along the way. The sharpie in case you have to write on your skin or... Uh, you know, write on anything. Sharpies will write on anything. But uh, anyway, pen and paper, that's going to go into my cargo pocket on my pants. That's going to come out of the pack. Uh, the next thing I get to, which brings me to my next point, I have an actual uh, uh, N95 rated uh, uh, dust mask, or respirator mask. And I have, there's two of them in this little package, and there's two sets of uh, safety goggles that actually seal around my eye. Uh, you know, here in Southern California, probably two of the biggest things that I'm worried about, which drove me to create this pack, is wildfires and earthquakes. Uh, those two things, uh, you know, especially when you factor in like buildings collapsing and buildings catching on fire, structures catching on fire, just wildfires burning in general across Southern California, those things kick up lots of dust and ash, things that you don't want to breathe in and you don't want in your eyes. Now, uh, one of my buddies, uh, one of my best friends that lives in Louisiana, he has a pack similar to this and we were discussing the contents of our packs and he talked about a fishing kit. Well, you know, Southern California is a desert unless you're actually on the beach. Um, so I would have zero use for a fishing kit. 
Um, but, you know, so I put a dust mask and uh, glasses in mine, and maybe if you live somewhere like in Louisiana, you wouldn't really necessarily have much call for a, a dust mask and safety glasses. So this is something you need to think about for where your geographical area is and specialized things that you may need for your area. All right, so uh, next thing is I have a little uh, uh, pad for my holster, so I can take that out of the bag, put that on my uh, belt, and then you can see on this side of the pack, I actually have my holster for my uh, Glock 35, not 35, my uh, Glock 22, I'm sorry, drew a blank there, uh, my Glock 22 that I, that I always have with me. So I'm going to get that out, put this on my belt, take the holster off the backpack, move that onto my belt, put my uh, Glock 22 on my belt, as well as my mag pouches, which are uh, used to stay in the truck, and then here I have two... Uh, mag pouch carriers that are clicked together. If I can get these off. Um, there we go. Two mag pouch carriers for uh, two rifle magazines because a lot of the time I'm traveling, you know, uh, and have guns on me. You know, that's... All right, uh, sun hat. Again, this will keep rain off your head or uh, sun off of you. So that's in the top. So now I've made a whole bunch of space. That's all stuff that's going, going in my pockets and on my belt. And I've made a whole bunch of space in the pack. Next thing I'm gonna get to, this little survival kit. I have a pair of mechanics gloves uh, attached to the top of it. This has a rubber band on it. Uh, and also, going back to the Caesar survival, this uh, hat and my raincoat on here can be used for cover uh, to cover me from the elements. And also, these gloves are covered. Now, this is a stainless steel uh, lunch box container. Uh, it's a completely stainless steel closed container. Um, this is the C for container, but this also it holds a lot of items from my survival kit, but you could also use it to boil water, you could use it to preserve food or save food or, or whatever like that if you're on the move. So now inside this lunch box kit, I have a spool of duct tape, which um, I just took the little centerpiece out of my dog's dog poop bag picker up or dog poop bags anyway, and just wrap duct tape around it. If you're going to carry duct tape in your survival kit, this is the best way to do it. This is how we do it in the military. You can put you know several hundred feet of duct tape and it doesn't take up that much space unlike a big giant roll of duct tape that's super bulky and, and has a lot of mass to it. Uh, another bandana, again, if you, you have ever been in a survival situation or have ever researched uh, survival gear, these little cotton triangular bandanas have a million uses in a survival situation. Uh, another bungee cord, which I've already talked about. Another fire steel, a, a much better fire steel than the one that's, that came on the little knife. Uh, this is a Leatherman multi-tool, or correction, this is a SOG multi-tool. Uh, again, multi-tool has a million uses. And then uh, in the bottom here, I have this little, uh, these little fire tenders and a little pocket survival guide. Uh, but those things are good for catching a spark and starting a fire to cover my seas for combustion. Uh, and then my little survival guide in case, you know, again, in case I'm not the one using this stuff. Uh, and then I have the little uh, Gerber miniature Bear Grylls multi-tool. Now, I already had a big multi-tool, but this one has Bear Grylls' name on it, and that's how you know it's good. This could save your life, bro. Uh, so anyway, I already had this. I got it as a gift. I threw it in here because I wasn't doing anything else with it. Uh, and also some big, um, just these real big safety pins. Safety pins, again, it's one of those things that uh, it takes up no space. It weighs nothing. You know, I could fit probably 40 of them in here if I wanted to. I'd have four in here. But you never know what you may use it for. You may need uh, to use it to pin this bandana up, to pin your arm up in a as a bandage, or pin your clothes up, or pin something to your pack, or you know anything. Um, so anyway, here we go. This is a uh, C for container, or container for C, whatever. Uh, the next thing I threw in here, and this is again, this is something I threw in here um, just because I already had it. And your your the second priority in survival is water. So. I already talked about how I carry a gallon of water, you know, with me in my truck all the time. And this backpack is actually a Camelback brand backpack that has a hundred ounce water bladder in it. So I should already have enough water or at least a good head start on water, but uh, you may need to uh, make fresh water. So this, this is the MSR sweet water kit. It actually has the purifier pump and the little chemical drops in here. So you can uh, filter, purify and treat water um, again. Southern California is a desert, yeah, so I'm not going to probably find too many natural water sources, but in a natural disaster, um, just a couple of years ago here in San Diego, we had a blackout, 
and uh, people's water was contaminated just from the blackout. So you may come across water, you know, in a structure or in a building or in a storm drain, and you may think it's fresh, but it's contaminated with sewage or whatever. Uh, but now I can take that water and make it into usable drinking water. Um, I have a roll of plastic bags, trash bags, that are secured with a rubber band. Again, this is a reoccurring thing, rubber bands and trash bags. Uh, you can waterproof stuff with it. You can use this as a poncho. Uh, you can actually make fresh water with this if you're somewhere that has vegetation or moisture in the ground. You don't see that on a lot of the survival TV shows. This is something I learned as a Cub Scout a million years ago, and it really works on how to just take a piece of plastic and uh, use the you know moisture in the air or moisture in a plant and uh, get fresh water out of it. But anyway, again, this is one of those things that takes up no space, no weight, and has a million uses. All right, this is one of the few things that I actually purchased for this kit. I saw it online. This is a uh, this is SOL, which is a, kind of a branch off company of uh, uh, Adventure Medical Kits. But this is the SOL Sport Utility Blanket. Um, this really drives home, this is really a, a great example of what I was talking about of having your survival kit, every item in your survival kit having multiple uses. So it says that this can be used as a shelter, as a ground tarp, a gear cover, a rescue litter. It's orange on one side, silver on the other, so you can use it for signaling. You can use it just as a blanket. Uh, and it's much more, um, uh, much better quality, much heavier, much, uh, much more durable, that's the word I'm looking for than those stupid little foam uh, emergency blankets, which I also have in here. Uh, but you can use it to carry loads if you have a buddy, and you can use it as an emergency blanket. So picnic blanket or emergency blanket. There's, I guess picnic blanket and ground tarp are the same thing, so maybe they're stretching a little bit. But there are several videos just on this on YouTube, and uh, I thought it was a good piece of equipment, so this is one of the few things that I actually went out and purchased to add to my kit. Um, even though in your four survivals of priority, your four priorities of survival, uh, Food is at the very bottom. Food is your lowest priority in survival because you can go 21 days without food. But, um, you know, you probably don't want to go 21 days without food unless you have to. And again, if you have somebody with you, uh, maybe they're not as mentally strong as you are. Maybe it's a small child, like I have a four-year-old daughter. Um, so, you know, food is, is a good comfort thing that uh, even though you don't really need it, even though it may not necessarily be a priority, uh, it can really help. Um, so I have taken and field stripped an MRE uh, anybody that's uh, familiar with MREs know that they come in a package that's about this big. But you can actually, we call it field stripping uh, in the Navy, and I think my Marine buddies uh, call it the same thing. But you just cut the package open, take out all the crap that you don't need, and like MREs have packaging inside of packaging inside of packaging, so you just get rid of all that junk, leave only the stuff you need, roll it down, and then seal it up with duct tape. And the MRE that used to be this big is now all the same stuff, but now it's only this big. Uh, so I have one field stripped MRE in here. Which one is this? This is... Uh, uh, Chili Mac, which is one of my favorites. Who doesn't love Chili Mac? Uh, so anyway, have a field strip MRE in there, just in case. And the last thing I have in here um, is uh, another container, um, but this is just basically the, the purpose of this container. You couldn't really boil water or anything in here, um, but uh, it just holds all the small stuff together. It's at the bottom of my pack. This is stuff that I would access maybe if I was holed up somewhere, uh, taking inventory, trying to figure out what to do, where to go next. Uh, so I'll pop this open for you. Um, again, I left the uh, instructions for the, uh, the uh, sweet water water purifier in here just in case I'm not the one using it, in case somebody else is using it. I put two of these emergency blankets in there. You can use them for signaling. You can use them for blankets. You can use them as a rain cover. They are kind of um, fragile. Uh, if you've ever used one of these, they're kind of a pain in the ass and uh, they don't really hold up that well. But they do have many, many uses. And this is another one of those items that takes up almost no space, weighs nothing. So why not throw a couple of them in here? It doesn't cost anything. Uh, here's a thing that my buddy uh, actually uh, made me put in here, or you know, told me I should put in here, and I never thought about. This is a little plastic bag full of assorted screws, like drywall screws, wood screws, because I have a multi-tool. The multi-tool has a screwdriver on it, and if you're ever trying to erect like an emergency shelter, it is a pain in the butt to either make stakes or uh, tr you know, it uses a lot of additional cordage to run the cordage out and around a tree and tie a knot, whatever. Uh, if you have a multi-tool that has a screwdriver on it, you can just drive these screws into anything uh, pretty easily by hand and, uh, and erect an emergency shelter that's actually much stronger and much faster just with the use of a few screws. So I thought that was a really good idea. Um, down in here, I have uh, you know, some more chem lights just in case. 
I have um, a bunch of zip ties because you can use zip ties for a billion different things. Uh, anybody in the military will be familiar with this. this is a glow belt. Uh, this is a signal that I could wear. If I had a second person with me, I could have them wear it. I can wrap it around my backpack. I can put it outside my little emergency shelter if I made one. Uh, again, weighs nothing. You could probably use it for several things. I could probably use this as a tourniquet in a pinch. Um, but something I had, so why not throw it in here? I had room for it. Um, this is something that's pretty neat. I came across these little spare battery holders. So I have spare batteries. This is uh, four double A's four more double A's because that's the most common size battery and my little emergency strobes uh, run off of double A's. Um, six triple A's in this little spares carrier and four of the lithium CR123 batteries for my Surefire Light on my pack and the Surefire Light I carry in my pocket all the time. Uh, another signal mirror just in case I need to, in case I have a second person with me and I want to signal my other person and we need to communicate with each other from a distance and we split up or whatever. Um, I have some uh, little adhesive Velcro in here. Um, I can cut it into small pieces, stick it on whatever, and Velcro things together. I just thought that was uh, another little thing that may be of some use. Uh, more duct tape, another survival strobe, and then this is something that I have as a rescue swimmer. This is a little, uh, it's just like a little carabiner that has two small hooks on it. And this is so you can hook uh, two chem lights onto it and hook it up somewhere and uh, again have a signal or a little light or whatever this is one of those things that again uh, I could probably use it for a thousand things uh, why not throw it in here I had it on hand and then in here I have a big uh, handheld uh, flare so it's basically like a road flare except this one burns for I think a road flare standard road flare burns for 15 minutes I believe um, this one burns for only three minutes but it's brighter than a road flare but the big advantage that this has over road flares is road flares can break, road flares can get waterlogged. Um, this one's actually for uh, maritime use, so it's plastic, it's sealed up, it won't break and get the uh, phosphorus stuff all in your junk. And uh, it's, it'll light even in wet conditions and burn super bright for uh, three minutes to flag somebody down, flag down a helicopter or aircraft, something like that. Um, and I misspoke earlier when I was talking about my survival kit. Uh, I have a handheld smoke in there as well. Uh, talk to anybody that's ever been in a survival situation and smoke is your friend. Smoke is the best way to be seen. Uh, so anyways, that's it. Um, there are a couple of other things that I have in here that I really just don't want to talk about. Um, that, that can stay between uh, me and Jesus or whatever. Um, but uh, that's it. The, so the big things, make sure, look up the 10 C's of survival. Again, that's uh, cutting. So, you know, some a knife or a tool. Uh, combustion, making fire, cover, cover yourself from the elements, uh, have something to make yourself a shelter. Uh, containers, containers are great. Containers that you can boil water in and, and hold stuff and seal stuff. Uh, cordage, cordage is hugely uh, important in a survival situation. Cordage, you know, meaning string or, or line or rope, anything like that. Candle, meaning light. Uh, you may have uh, you may have a fire starter, but that's not really the most convenient way to make light. Uh, this is the most convenient way to make light with your flashlight. Um, so have something to, that's in addition to making fire is specifically for producing light. Uh, compass, so you can get from point A to point B if you need to strike out on foot. Uh, comms, a way to communicate, a way to communicate with another person. And uh, communication comes in many forms, uh, audible, visual, pyrotechnic, uh, and then you know radio communication or your cell phone. Uh, but that should be a last resort, uh, really in survival when we're talking about communications, we're really talking mostly about signaling. And then uh, care, care meaning uh, taking care of yourself, first aid, and that kind of stuff, which again is your, your probably your most valuable resource in this whole med kit, because I may go the rest of my life and never touch anything, except I guarantee you, I will probably use that med kit. And I'm an EMT anyway, so it's good stuff to have on hand. So uh, anyway, that's my kit. Um, I apologize for being a little bit long-winded, but people were asking for it. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, leave your questions in the comments, and I'll get back to it. And um, the last thing I'll say is the, the greatest piece of survival kit is your mind. Uh, there are people, unfortunately, that uh, don't know how to change your tire, uh, let alone use any of the survival equipment. Uh, all the survival equipment in the world is not going to help you if you don't know how to use it. Uh, and the best example of that is a little fire starter. I can't tell you how many people I've seen go camping with a little fire starter. They have a little fire starter in their truck. They have a little fire starter they keep in the backpack. And I ask them, 
have you ever actually used it to start a fire? And they, most of them say no. Uh, every time I go camping, I like to use a uh, primitive method of starting a fire before I go to the cigarette lighter or before I, you know, throw a road flare in there and try to start the fire. Uh, so, you know, all this stuff does no good if you don't know how to use it, if you don't know anything about survival, if you don't know how to navigate on foot, um, you know, you may be in your car, and especially here, like I said, in, in big cities like San Diego, Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, places like that, where you're on a freeway, and, you know, like in Los Angeles, the freeways on both sides have walls that go, you know, 30 feet up from the freeway. So you're basically trapped in that little freeway, uh, you know, channel. And uh, so if your car breaks down or if traffic comes to a complete stop or the road becomes completely impassable, you're going to need to go on foot and you're going to need to leave your vehicle. And you need to have a, a plan for that. It's irresponsible if you don't have a plan for that. But learn how to survive, learn how to use basic survival stuff, learn how to make a fire, learn how to signal, um, and don't put anything in your survival kit that doesn't have several uses. If you have anything in your survival kit that is singular use, get rid of it. Um, and don't get sucked down the rabbit hole of thinking of all these what if situations, what if there's zombies, and what if it's an earthquake, and what if it's an asteroid, and what if the government tries to take over, and what if Korea drops a nuke on us, and blah. You can't get uh, wrapped around the, the, the axle on that stuff. You need to think logically, think about things that are, are applicable in most situations. And like I said, uh, I just tailored my kit for just a, a, mostly for a natural disaster or, uh, you know, a roadside emergency. Um, and then I could probably survive for quite a while in this kit if, as a last resort, I had to walk away from my vehicle and strike out on foot. Uh, and also, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I've spent most of my life uh, wearing flip-flops as my shoes. And, uh, you know, I'm not Viet Cong, so I'm probably not going to get too far on that. So I also keep a pair of my old running shoes uh, in the back of my truck here and a pair of extra, a couple of pairs of extra socks uh, in case I have to go out on foot. My flip-flops aren't going to get me too far. But anyway, it's things like that you need to think about. And, you know, like I said, the things I put on this tag, uh, not to forget. But anyway, long story short, I'll wrap it up. That's my survival kit. That's my get-home kit uh, in this nice compact little container. Um... And the last thing I'll say is a lot of people ask me, how much does your kit cost? Uh, and the answer to that is I have no clue. 85% uh, of this stuff is stuff that I already had that was issued to me through the military, including the pack, including all, you know, all these things that are dummy corded on here. Um, this is all stuff that was issued to me through the military, so I had it already. Uh, I would estimate that if you were going to start from scratch and put this kit together, you're probably going to be in for several hundred dollars, probably four to five hundred bucks. Um, uh, but anyway, that's the bad news. Um, but you don't have to copy my kit, come up with your own. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know what else you would like to see. Thanks for watching. Victoria, if she walks away from the wreckage deep in the Kentucky woods, somehow making her way in the dark to this remote home for help.